Man, I'm tired of working for other people, man. I'm about to make a switch to an entrepreneur. Who with it? I'm most definitely with it. Listen, man, the powers that be don't want you to wake up and get out that everyday rat race. They want to make workers, not entrepreneurs. So you know I'm with it, man. All right, so, man, so let's get to it. Go ahead and make this extra money and switch it over. Let's get it. Let's get it. What's going on, everybody? This is Grind Hustle Live. First you find your grind. Then you turn into a hustle. And then you live life how you want to. We are here with a special guest. A four-time medalist. Two gold, two silver. What hasn't this young man done? He has helped kids. He has been, he's basically made history. He's done so many things. He exemplifies what it is to grind Hustle and live, and we are happy to have him here with us today. My man, Cullen Jones. Appreciate oh, it, I just want, I just want to say one thing because sometimes I go and correct shelves. Yeah. Basically, made history. He ah, made history. Appreciate that. <laughs> he made history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ain't no basic about it. He made history. Yeah. Exactly. You right? It's the one yeah. time I'm gonna give Matt. His credit. <laughs> it's the one time I'm gonna give him his credit. But no, we are here with Cullen Jones. Appreciate We're so that, happy. Man. We're so honored to be here with you. Um, big fan of the show. I thank you, man. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I've been watching. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you, man. We're trying, man. What we're doing. That's what it's about, right? Um, you know, we want to talk about. It's so much to cover with you, bro. And um, we want to just take mm -hmm. you all the way to the beginning, mm -hmm. to the beginning, before the medals, before all the accomplishments. We want to take you to the very beginning, to where it all started from. So, um, tell me about it. Where you from? Yeah, born in the Bronx, um, didn't stay long. My mom and dad decided uh, we were gonna leave Gun Hill and, and go to Irvington, New Jersey. Mm. Oh, Gun, Gun Hill. Hill. Mm. Gun Hill, went over to Irvington. All my family's still back in, in New York. And uh, it was hard being an only child at that point because everybody that was around me that I used to grow up with was still in New York. So mm. being in, in Irvington, uh, my dad wanted me to be a basketball player. He always played, I could probably bounce a ball before I could lift a fork. So basketball just came kind of easy to me. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, my humble beginnings with swimming just because my mom used to throw me in the tub. I'm going to date myself. Played with Thundercats and He-Man for hours. Hey, everybody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> always had my Hot Wheels in there. And I'd sit there for hours. And my mom would be like, all right, you have to get out of this water. So when they said, you know, we're going to go to Dorney Park, Pennsylvania, go on the water rides, I was losing my shit essentially. <laughs> oh, okay. So I was excited to get uh, get in on one of the rides. My dad wanted to get on the biggest ride there. I wanted to jump behind him. Um, and he said to me, you know, if I go first, you're going to go second. Your mom's going to go last. I was a very skinny and I've known you for 20 plus years. You know how skinny I was skinny. I was tall, but I was skinny. And um, they let me get on the ride and I ended up going down this ride after my dad. I flipped upside down. And uh, it was an inner tube. You go down the tunnel, hit the pool, boom, flipped upside down. And I'm under this thing trying to pull myself up, and I couldn't get up. And so oh, wow. they said that a child can have brain damage after being under for 30 seconds. And my wife probably agrees with that. But <laughs> <laughs> I was under for a little bit over 30. And they pulled me out, resuscitated me. And Shells, you... We know each other for a long time. I'm always about the jokes. The first thing at five years old out of my mouth was, what's the next ride we getting on? Because, <laughs> <laughs> yo, I'm at a water park. I'm at Dorney Park. I'm not trying to leave. But I almost killed myself. I almost killed myself. Right, let's get to it. I'm okay. good. I'm good. I'm, okay. I want to get on more rides. <laughs> okay. So, so what I want to know, all right, that yeah. happened to you at five years old. Yeah. How were you able to overcome that? Like when you older, because you know when something happens to somebody when they're young, they get traumatized. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's, yeah. and it's like tough to get over it, some people. So how were you able to like like face that fear and just become the champion that you are? Like yeah. that you are? It, took, it took a long time. Um, oh, yeah. I was afraid of the water after that. Um, mm. I was still in shock when I was at the water park. Yeah. So it took five different teachers before I started feeling comfortable. Wow. And okay. so, I mean, you bring up the stuff about helping kids. Um, I was that kid. 
I was afraid of the water. And that's why I think, especially as black folks, we need to learn to swim. Right. Nearly five times more likely to drown than any other race. Right. And so, and it's like a make a stereotype, of a stereotype they don't know of how to swim. They don't know, yeah. We don't swim. We yeah. don't do that. We don't like nothing cold. Nah, it's not true. Mm. You know, if you look at Olympic sports and you look outside of what we're nat naturally supposed to be good at, <laughs> yeah. um, you got Sean, um, I just dropped his name, but um, the figure skater. You've got um, Simone Manuel. Yeah. You've got, you know, Gabby Douglas. You've got all of these black athletes that do things that we're not supposed to do. Venus and Serena. Venus and Serena, yeah. Tiger Woods. I mean, the list goes on and on. Yeah. But this, these are sports that, you know, aren't typical. If you look earlier than the 90s, I was getting made fun of because I was wearing Speedos. Right. You don't think people were making fun of Tiger? You don't oh, think they were making fun of Venus right. and Serena because mm -hmm. they weren't running track or doing something that was stereotypically black. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I didn't care. I, I, I just love what I was doing. So it, it took... It took me five teachers to get comfortable with swimming again. And and with the five teachers, like how how many years spans? Like how, how oh, that was years? about three years. Three it years took about like, three years. Yeah, I, I okay. started on a swim team when I was about eight years old, um, okay. and it was really because of a girl. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> she was like, "You should come watch me." I was like, "Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do that." I'm Girls make us do a lot of. I'm gonna go do that. And so I started getting really like competitive, and mm. my dad was like, "Really?" And my mom's like, "Look." We gonna put some money towards this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we ain't gonna stop halfway. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, so I started doing it. <clears throat> I remember walking out there. My mom got me there 30 minutes early, and I'm walking out here with my swim bag that had like fins, cap, goggles, and speedos. And I was mm -hmm. like, "What did I just get myself into?" <laughs> I'm out here by myself, mm -hmm. and you know, being there and having that very, very revealing moment, yeah. um, I noticed it was different. And so uh, 30 minutes later, everyone else started coming out and they were wearing the same thing. And that's when I started to be like, okay, maybe this is something I can do. Oh, okay. All right, so the big thing that we always try to endorse and try to get people to do is to overcome a fear. And that fear is to overcome of investing in stocks, um, buying that first house, buying mm -hmm. a multifamily house. Because different things that my parents did, like we, my, my parents bought a one family house and my aunts was employing him, or my uncle was employing him, and said, hey, look, get a multifamily house. Mm -hmm. That way somebody can pay your mortgage, and then the other Payers, three units yeah. will be able to be a source of income for you right. if you ever move out, or the other two uh, units will be a source of income for you, and you can live in one and live for free. Yeah. Now, my uncle Bubba, like, he's living for free. He doesn't have bills. He doesn't have the stress that my father had on him because he's still paying that 30-year mortgage. Yeah. And he always says, dang, I should listen to your uncle. Dang, I should listen to your uncle. And he told me when I was thinking about doing it originally, he was like, yeah, but what if the tenants don't pay? What is this? What is that? And that's when he was still actively working and having an active income. Mm -hmm. So he said that, man, you guys are doing the right thing, talking about Shells and uh, Derek, like what you guys are doing. I wish I, when I was a young man again, I wish I would have took the plunge, but I would have fear. Yeah. And what did you do, especially a fear, especially as a young kid, to overcome the fear of going into the unknown? Because that's what it, that's what water really is. You're going into a, a sometimes it can be a dark place and yeah. it can be a scary place to get back in there and overcome that fear. Because that's what we're trying to push people to do. And if I had an insight on that, I could be able to try to help people more. Yeah, I think that like at the age, I'm gonna tell you, at the age of five, I didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. Mom was bringing me to that that swim lesson. Yeah. <laughs> but when it comes to the fear aspect of things, I mean without great risk there is no reward kind of thing mm. and you have to put yourself out of your comfort zone mm. um, greatness is i mean it's a cliche but it's very true it's mm. outside of that you know you you talk about your dad you talk about your uncle they had a nine to five to help support that dream that they were doing mm. and to have that um tenacity to sit there and say i'm gonna put myself out there i'm gonna because I think a lot of a lot of the risks that a lot of people are afraid of of being uncomfortable is not having the things that they like not rewarding themselves. We are mm -hmm. a society that loves quick gratification. Mm -hmm. Social media True. has taken us to, to that. To mm -hmm. that, so we don't want to sit back and say, "Oh my God, I'm going to buy this duplex or three three family home um, because I want to take my family to Disney or this year. I want to do this." But by sacrificing this one thing, once this catches up you now have revenue that's going to continue so that you can go to Disney for the next 5, 10, 6, 20 years. Mm. And I think what a lot of people are, the problem with a lot of people is they're short-sighted and they have the fear because they don't, it, it's unseen. 
But you ask any entrepreneur, any investor, it's not that they're not scared. They know that they're scared, but they've also found a way to build the revenue here so that when they make that jump, they've also planned five, 10 years in advance. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> when it comes to fear, I think um, from a swimming perspective, you just have to find the right teacher. When it comes to the business perspective, you just have to find the right education. Mm. And be and don't be afraid to to take the leap. I mean, I, I've done many uh, businesses where I was I've caught L's, man. <laughs> I have, and I've I've had some W's for sure. Um, but I also built up some of the money to a point where I felt like, all right, if I don't see this again, I'm gonna be okay. I know how to hustle back to get this. I'm gonna grind my way back to get to this. Um, and I think that that's that's what people have to do. You know, you build up to, you know, something that's like $10. You want something to $10 to invest. I'm going to build it all the way up to 10 Okay, cool. Now I'm going to invest that 10 immediately. Now you're at zero. Mm. Build to 20 so that if you throw that 10 you're still good. And I think that the only way you get to that point is to sacrifice, is to sit back and understand investments, is to make sure that you're educated on those things. Don't think that just because you have it at that moment that you immediately are like, okay, cool, I have exactly what I need to do. Now I'm just going to invest it. Because now you're left with zero. So um, if you think fear is going to be something that um, is not going to be a part of the equation, you're dead wrong. You have to accept the fear and you have to jump with it. And I just wanted to talk about one thing which you said is very important, especially in my life. I know in Shell's life, I know in Derek's life, is that sometimes we hear all these crucial things, all these, uh, I would say, I don't know, it's a war between man and woman, as far as like what a woman want, what a man want, and it's a lot of negativity being spread, because negativity spreads faster. But like he said, if he didn't have his mother in his life, being able to say like, okay, no, even if you're scared, because my mother did it to me before, yeah. even if you're scared, you still going to do it because I don't want your life <laughs> yeah. to be ruled by fear. Exactly. That's why you can ask Derek, you can ask Shells, anybody where they'd be like, man, you crazy, you be doing crazy, you be jumping out of planes. And the reason why I do that kind of stuff because I don't have fear. You know, I always had a mindset, and my mother says, it's always going to be what it's going to be. If it's meant to be, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And fear will hold you back instead of you being able to live your life. And my mom said, you never want to be an old person and being in a bed and like, dang, I wish I would have did that. Mm -hmm, you know, true. so that's why I just want everybody to understand, like, you have to have that family structure. Like, even with Colin, like, he went off, he's a successful mm -hmm. man, but he went off, he made sure he had a wife and, and kids in the family, and everyone plays a role. So we have to stop bashing each other and have to understand, like, let's work together. And if you do desire a woman that wants certain things, don't bash her for it. If you really want that woman, you go ahead and work for it, and you get to that level. Or if you want somebody that's going to work with you, you get somebody to work with you. Yeah. But it all depends. Like, stop bashing. It's not getting you anywhere. Because, like, my mother helped tremendously. I know Derek's yeah. mother. I know your mother from mm -hmm. what you're saying. That's and mother, Shell's mother. You can't do it with a split and divided house. It doesn't work like that. You have to unify some type of way. Right? So, um, just to kind of piggyback off of what you guys said earlier about instant gratification, I have a saying that I always say, instant gratification leads to long-term suffering. Yeah. And um, the reason why I say, I mean, it's self-explanatory. I mean, people go after the small hits and don't dedicate time to the things that's going to give them, like you said, Disney for 20 years. You want Disney for today and maybe next year, but not Disney for the next 20 years. So yeah. at the end of the day, what kind of sacrifices have you made in order to get to the point that you're at right now? You know, for swimming, it was... I mean, you know this. There was times that y'all were like, hey, come hang out. And I was like, right, I can't. I got more than practice. Five o'clock in the morning, mm, four o'clock in the morning. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, swimming took my life completely. Um, when it came to college, I had a different college experience. Like, a lot of people go to college. They go just to class or they catch a job and then they're done by, like, seven. And then they're drinking all night and they're having a good time and they're partying. That's not what my day looked like. It was up at five o'clock. Jumping into a cold pool, lift, go to class, go back to the pool, lift, go to study hall, recover, work or homework, back at it again. Um, and I mean, I did that for four years. Um, do I regret it? Not even gotten. And it's not even those. It's not the Olympic medals that did it. It was just I'm proud of myself for that hustle huh. and what that did for me long term is why y'all want me on this 
right. yeah. great podcast. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it was that hustle that 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 built me for later. You know, one of the, the scariest things is like as a pro athlete is if you're not in basketball and football, and for some of them even, they make a lot of money, you make good money, and then it, it's done. Short lived. And it's like, okay, so what are you gonna do now? Yeah. You know, if you're not making LeBron Steph money, then it's like, okay, what's next? And so that was a very scary transition for me. Um, I had had a 12 year, amazing year uh, uh, pro uh, career, and then was like, well, oh shit, my wife's pregnant. Like, what, am I, what the hell am I gonna do now? Yeah. And um, I remember sitting there and asking God, I was like, look, you give me a way and I'll do it. I just, I'm not afraid of the work. I'm not afraid of the grind. You just got to give me a way. He's testing me now because <laughs> now it's Everybody just like did opportunity, it. opportunity, opportunity. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, let me, let me, let me, let me. But like I said, I'm not afraid of the grind. Yeah. Um, I started off with not making a lot of money working at a hospital as a fundraiser. And I was like, all right, God, if this is the way you want me to do it, cool, I'll do this. I worked there for a year. I, I really hated every minute of it. It was, not, it was not my favorite point. I had two wonderful ladies that are like still my best friends throughout all of it. That's probably the highlight of the whole situation. But then Speedo called me and was like, mm. I want you to come back and I want you to lead our philanthropy now. I'm like, oh, okay, this is what you were setting me up, God. Okay, so it was a year of learning in this space. Now I'm going to be able to take what I learned here and put it into swimming mm-hmm. in a meaningful way. So like that hustle, that grind that I learned from college, from swimming, it, it just set me up for those things. And that's one thing that, you know, was when it comes to my son, Avon, it's like, I don't care what you do, but I want you to be in sport in some way. Because sport teaches you things that like you don't learn. Discipline. Home. Discipline, yeah. Discipline, time, yeah. willpower. Yeah. You're not always going to win. And I don't want you to cry about it. Not yeah. everyone gets a trophy or a participation medal. Yeah. Like, that's what you learn. And I feel like right now, unfortunately, we are in a society where everyone has to win. And that's just not the truth. It's not going to happen. Shameless plug. My son is now in soccer. And his team is number one. Yeah. Let's, give him a crack Let's go. Love you, boy. Let's go. I just had to put a little savings plug. Yeah, man. You guys are proud daddy. So yeah, even if he came dead and last, though. You gotta make sure you. <laughs> no, 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 no. At first, listen, right. at first it was shaky. Yeah, okay. He it called me up is. upset, and I had it to matter of fact, is. I was in the car with. I was in the car with. You. I was in the car with somebody. Yeah. And he called me up upset, and um, I told him, "Listen, Jordan was the number one at first. No Jordan had to go through. Jordan oh, was got yeah. cut from the team. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He kept going. He kept going, and now this his team is number one. They're playing this Friday, and hopefully, if they win the champion, you know, if they win this last game, yeah. they're going to the championship. But that was off on a tangent. I like just it. One I like just, it. Now, Absolutely. How, but I want to actually still touch on that. Mm-hmm. How did having your son, uh, basically, like, how did it change you? Did it give you more hunger? I more mean, grind? in every in every sense of the word. You know, like I said, Rupi was pregnant, and I knew that I needed to find a way to be, you know, not only the supporter but dad, but to be a provider. Yeah. Um, and I know you talked about the family, mm. and it's so important because what I was looking for was a partner. Mm. I wasn't looking for someone to take care of. I was looking for someone who was going to be that other rib for me. I mm. need a partner here. Mm. And that's what I have out of my wife. But now I need to also provide. And so when he was born, I was like, yo, whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. Um, And then (laughs) he cried. He's a baby. The only thing that calmed him down was the sound of running water. He he caught the bug of the water at an early age. Six months, he we had him in the swim in swim lessons and I remember. Um, yeah, I, I don't want him to ever go through what I went through. Or even my mother, when I was 15, she had to tell me the story of what happened to Dorney Park because she was filling in gaps, and she's doing it through tears. And I'm like, mm. yeah, no, nah, it's not going to happen to us. Yeah. We're going to get him in the swim lessons. And he's a little too confident now. He's trying to jump in without first. us. <laughs> Head first. No floaty. I had the same, that happened to the same thing with my son. Like, um, at my complex, it was a swimming pool when I lived in Perth Fanboy. Yeah. And he was like, oh, I'm scared. I'm like, you scared? What happened? I'm like, what you scared? You scared of the water? I spent, so the first time we went out there, mm. we spent all day 
all day I stayed outside with him to be able to make him unfit. Then he's like, oh, I'm yeah. not scared no more. He started just jumping right in, right in. There you go. And one time he swallowed some water, he came back up, he threw up. Yeah. And everybody was yeah. looking at everybody. It's happened to us all. And I was like, yeah. I was like, wipe it off your face. Put your chin up. So what? Yeah. Things happen. Yeah. They probably did it before in the past. Yeah. And I told him, I said, the reason why I stayed outside with you all day is to teach you two things. And the second lesson came free of charge. The first lesson was, don't let fear, fear can do two things to you. It can shut you down mm-hmm. or it can motivate you. The same way you spoke about when your son was born. I had that same feeling. Yeah. I know you probably had that same feeling as well. I was like, oh man, it's beautiful, <laughs> but Jesus, oh, I got to uh-huh. try to provide. <laughs> I come up with a plan. Yeah. Like, this is not cheap. Even the hospital bill, I was thinking about that because I had to knock that out the park. Mm-hmm. So fear actually pushed me to do better, to try to find yeah. something, to find a way to provide. And I always had to try to install it in my son. Like, listen, never let fear shut you down. Mm-hmm. Even with the roller coaster, he was scared to get on Nickelodeon. I was like, you going to ride it? He's I don't want to ride it. And then he rode that one roller coaster. All of a sudden, now every roller Everyone. coaster, no fear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> you know, so... Yeah. That's the big thing that we preach as well. Like anything you do in life to get yourself ahead, just make sure you have no fear. When business, anything, go ahead and take that leap. Something, yeah, something can happen. Like Colin, he, lo- he may have losses, but so what? That happens in life. You have to learn how to lose to be able to know how to win. To win. So. Yeah. Oh, well, now we're going to start the segment. Okay. Yeah. All right, so. This part of the segment is called Grind Time with D. Yeah, yeah. Grind Time with yeah. D. <laughs> so, so what we're going to do, what, what we want to know is um, just a moment I did through your whole swimming journey, just you being the champion that you are through your whole journey, yeah. uh, we, uh, we would like to know a moment where you took the most and did the least with to turn your grind into a hustle. Ah, uh, the most with the least. Yes. Um, you know, I remember, I can't say the school. I remember it was in, in college. Uh, I was starting to get better. And I'm going I'm to bring it back a little further when I was 16. And you will remember this. <laughs> um, my dad passed. Yeah, and the yeah. last words out of his mouth was, he did it. Because I went to a meet. And I set an A time, which is really good for the age that I was. And <laughs> it was like his last words were like, he did it. He did it. Uh, he passed the next morning, and um, mm. one of the things that my dad always said to me was like, when I got the pink and purple ribbon, the sixth and seventh place, it was okay. When I started winning, you know, I was at Rutgers, actually, at a swim meet, and um, one of the moms was like, shouldn't he be playing basketball? You know my mama. She whipped around quick. My dad oh, grabbed yeah. her and was like, hold on, come here. Miss well, Jones ain't playing. Miss <laughs> Jones ain't and playing. And he said to me, he goes, you know, do you know why she said that? And I was like, why? And he goes, well, because it was okay when you were getting last. Mm. Now, that you, now that you're winning, you're beating all these white kids and their kids and their sons, you know, now it's a problem. Mm. Don't you ever let anyone stop you. And it just rung in my head after he passed and continuing. So... I had some really low lows after he passed away. I went to psychologists to talk about it. I went to college. And there was a moment where I went to represent my, my college, NC State, mm-hmm. at another school. And I always grew up loving Jordan. My dad and I are Knicks fans. And Jordan always came in dropping that double nickel. Y'all, y'all, like, y'all, like, y'all, like, y'all like greatness. Y'all, like, y'all, y'all recognize greatness. Right. Y'all recognize greatness. And... At this meet, I had a fever of 102. Oh, wow. Flu season. And I okay. was sick. And the way swim meets work is, like, you swim your event, then there's a break, and yeah. then you can sit down while other events are going. And in between events, I was going to the bathroom and throwing up because mm. I was so sick. But I wasn't letting my team down. And I remember it was the last race, and the coach was, like, it was... Getting real tense in the in the uh, the rafters with the parents because yeah. NC State and, and they kept running me every time I ran or I, I swam through, I was winning everything. Mm. And so here's the last event, I'm going last, on the relay. I'm anchor leg and I was just in the bathroom throwing up and I'm sitting there and the only thing in my head was this is your Jordan moment. Oh, this is your Jordan moment. This is your Jordan moment. And I got on the blocks. 
and I could barely stand. Like, they were about to tell me to get down because I was standing up there and I was wobbling. Oh, wow. And the guy swam in, and I just took off. And we went from sixth to first. And I got out. I had to be helped out. And the parents were throwing bottles at me. And this is in 2003. Is Miss Jones there? Oh, wow. Hell no. I'm about to say. I'm about to say. I'm about to say. I don't know. She that don't sound like an oh, she was uh, there. No, no, she wasn't there. I'm not sure she even knows this happened. Um, she might still want to go back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were throwing shit at me. And so bad that they had to throw, like, a, a jacket over me and, like, put me through the back door to get me back into the bus because they were, um, it was in the deep south. Yeah. Oh. oh and, wow. um, Yeah. 2003. Oh, man. Got on the bus. And the only thing I was in my head was two things. Damn, that was fast. That was my Jordan moment. Uh. <laughs> and the second thing was my dad's words. He did it. Okay. Ever. Oh. Ever. Let nobody stop you. Yeah. So. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the grinding, man. Grinding, grind, man. Grind, grind hustle. Well, um, one thing that I'm speaking about discrimination and things that you had to go through. Mm-hmm. How was it for you? Because you're getting it on both sides. You're getting the black people, the, you know, our community mm-hmm. telling you, dog, you six what? You should be playing basketball. Yeah. Somebody's caught, somebody's failed. And then on the other side, you got people telling you, you ain't supposed to be over here. Yeah. What are you doing over here? How did you fight through that? Like, how did you, like, what type of determination did you have to have in order to fight through basically not having any friends on either side and just basically going and just making sure that you made sure that you got to your goal and finished the task. Like, what did you, like, what did you have to, what kind of zone did you have to be in? You know, that's a really good question. I mean, I think for me, it's not that I didn't feel like I was wanted from either side. I just kept my circle very, very close. I mean, think about it. It was you, me, O, and a couple of other people that I really hung out with. Right. Um, I had friends in swimming, but there weren't many. Um, and it wasn't by design that way, but that's just how it happened. Uh, when I went to college, just, I mean, I was fast, so everyone liked me. But it wasn't like I wanted to hang out with those people. Mm. Um, I think I told you this story, but it was it's funny because the first two years I was the only black kid on the team I was the black, only black team kid on the team the whole four years but the second year my sophomore year I was like yo I need to be around some people of color like this is a guy needs some enrichment and so there were these two guys um they used to call them salt and pepper and black dude super black dude from Africa was pepper and light-skinned uh dude that used to live in Bryant <laughs> um, used to live in you know Venezuela, spoke Spanish, from Miami. I mean, these dudes were the lady killers. And I went up to them, and I flat out was like, hey, can I hang out with y'all? Because I just need to be around black folks. And they just died laughing. <laughs> and I was like, who, who comes up to someone and is yeah. like, can I be your friend? <laughs> but, but I was that desperate, that's desperate to be around yeah. <laughs> black folks, you know what I'm saying? And you know, Brian was one of the groomsmen in my wedding, right. you know, and it was just one of those things where I actively sought out people that I wanted to be around because that's what I needed when I needed that right. because I had a small group of people. I didn't realize how important that was until I went to the Olympics and I became friends with all the NBA guys who mm-hmm. came and watched us race. And I remember D Wade said to me, he was like, yo, um, you gonna watch out when you get home. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, you got fame now. People are going to be coming at you everywhere. He's like, you got to know where people are at. Know their angle before you let them in. Keep your your circle right. close. Because for all the things that I went through, discrimination from either side, I always had my core people that I always hung out with. Now, right. did some of those people go this way or this way? Sure. They did. But I keep the people that I need to keep very close. Yeah. yeah that's dope. That's dope. And just making a tie back to what Colin was saying, a lot of people automatically, I know me, like when I start working in corporate buildings, I start seeing a lot of people that didn't look like me. So that gave me like a fear and a hesitancy to be able to proceed forward. Cause I'm like, I never, I came from East Orange. That's 99.9% black before that Newark. 
which is a large population of black people. So I've never been in a, a place where it was just all white people with no people that looked like me. So like, I wanted to know how are you able, because I want to try to put that out there for people that's mm -hmm. going to get into trucking. Like you go and you go ahead, you build, you bid for your first truck. You're going to be in a room full of people that don't look like you. Or if you bid, you go to an auction to buy land or buy a house, it's going to be a lot of people in that don't look like you. Mm -hmm. So you have to be securing yourself to be able to go in that room because you already worry like, what if it don't work? What if it don't, what if it fall through? And all these emotions hit you at one time, you might turn around and walk out the door. Yeah. So like, I want to prepare people with this. What we're doing is prepare you for everything so you know up front what you're facing. So if you do run into a problem, you can be like, you know what? I knew that was going to happen. I knew I was going to walk through that door and it wasn't going to look like me. So I can adjust and, and handle it so you can go ahead and whatever you want to do. You don't have to, like Colin saying. Yeah. That's why I really want them on the show. We don't have to stick to one thing to be able to make money. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. If you want to make buttons, have a factory, all you do is make buttons. If you want to make zippers, mm -hmm. if you want to make shoestrings, all these things are materials that we use on a day-to-day, -day, but nobody thinks about doing it. Everybody wants to do the same cookie-cutter thing all the time. Whatever you want to do, just dig down inside of you and come up with what you want to do. You don't have to have, like him. Mm -hmm. Him and his mother, his family, and the people around him was like, we're going to support you. Even if, like he said, the team. Like, I met Sheldon later on, but I knew... There for a long time. You have a team that's going to believe in your dream and believe in each other's dream and branch out and do other things. So I just wanted to know where in that came, did it come from something internal or how did you approach that to be able to say, you know what, even though this room feels uncomfortable, I'm going to still walk in it with confidence and do what yeah, I have to do. Yeah, where, like where your confidence came from. Well, like when that you were a speedo 99% of your time. <laughs> 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 Um, but you, you brought up a very good point. But see, I, I think that we as black men don't, we over skip this. And, but it's the feeling that we feel every single time. We walk into a room where we're the only black person in there. There is a moment where you have to adjust yourself to understand that you are the only one there. People call it... Um, uh, now I'm like I'm I'm missing the word, but it's like I'm gonna just throw something out there that ahead. I made up. Tokenomics. <laughs> it's like role switching. You're role yeah. switching. You're, yeah. you're playing a role because like you walk in there as 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 the only black person, and mm. you have to adjust. So mm. first off, you need to understand that you need to deal with that first. Mm. Like white folks walk into a room, they don't feel what we feel immediately. Mm. Like, oh my God, do I have? My glasses make me feel less threatening and because, oh my God, what am I wearing and right. how am I standing and how am I speaking? And, you know, Jay-Z says it best. I don't walk any shorter. I, I walk the same way. I talk the same way. But let me tell you something. When you make that much money, you can, you can do, do that. that. Yeah, you can do yeah. that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For, for I, I am not at that level by no means by the stretch. And I still feel that. Everyone feels that when they walk into a room. So I feel like I think the first thing we have to deal with is understand that that feeling is real. And then once you get past that, you understand that there is nothing else that you can do but be you. And so that's what I always felt. Like I, I wasn't gonna change the way I was. I wasn't gonna switch roles. I was, I was gonna be who I was. You know, if I like rock music or a song that I like, then I like it. Mm -hmm. And you know, Camry days, I'd be playing music. He'd be like, what the? And I'm like, yo, <laughs> I just like the song. He was, he was up know? on that techno and all that stuff back in the day. I was always on to something different. And, but see, you got to remember, like, back then, You're like, that was, that was also a death sentence. Because if you think about it back in the 90s yeah. and the early 2000s, it was all about conformity. You had to wear the big pants. You had to do all these things. Until recent... Now it's cool to be different. Right. Listen to different clothes. Wear right. or listen to different different music. Mm -hmm. Wear different clothes. Right. It's yeah. different now. And TRL helped that out too. Oh yeah. Mixing the countdown. Yeah. You had yeah. to listen to like Green Day and different. Yeah. You you start like you know got an ear for it. Yeah. You know. I mean. I just. I think that there just came a point where I just became comfortable with myself enough to just. Just you were ahead of your time did. back then. I will listen. I will admit on camera. <laughs> <laughs> he used to try to put us on all different kind of music when he come mm. back from college. And I'm looking at him like, "Fam, we is not listening." To that. <laughs> 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 all right, man. Mm -hmm. It's time to talk about it. 
This is not just decorations on uh, on the table here. These are medals. Yeah. Peace. And a lot of people work their whole life to be able to even get the chance to even compete to get the medals. Not even to get the medals. Yeah. Just to compete to get these medals. What does it feel like to be from Irvington, New Jersey, <laughs> and to obtain not one medal, not two medals, <laughs> but four medals? Uh, I mean, it's surreal. It's kind of hard to actually put into words. Um, I feel like the moment itself happens so quick, but you give me the opportunity to relive it just by being here and being able to talk about it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it happened like that. You know, I, I've had the world record for 12 years. I'm a world record holder. Yeah. First black American to have a long course world record. Say it again. Say it with your chest. Say it, with your, say it again. First yeah. black American You're being real humble. in say swimming it. to have a world record and having it for like 13 So years. remember yeah. earlier when I said he basically made history? That was disrespectful. Yeah, that that man no made thing. history, man. That's <laughs> clapping yeah. up for my God, man. Appreciate That's it. clapping up for my God right there. Appreciate definitely, it. definitely. Humbled. Um, you know, it, it took a lot of work. It took a lot of dedication. It took a lot of days where I wasn't able to hang out with my boys and, yeah. and, and my friends. And um, Man, you hit that wall and you see that time and it makes everything. It validates everything. Um, and then coming home. I remember coming back and I was in... Um, I was about to do the Today Show, and I was walking down uh, Times Square, and somebody came up to me and was like, oh, can I have your autograph? And my first thought is like, no, I'm not a basketball player. And they're like, no, 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 you're Colin Jones, you're the black swimmer. And I was like, yeah. And I started signing an autograph, and then another person saw it, and then another person you saw it. You were the first black person? I was fine. <laughs> 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 I was surrounded by no less than 50 people asking for my autograph. And to come home to that was, I just, when you're over there, you don't realize the impact. Yeah. You know, yeah, the French team was saying. Because you're not scoreboard watching, though. Like, but, you, you, but you're also in a bubble. Like, yeah. the, the Olympic yeah. Village is so yeah. different. Like, it's, it's like summer camp on steroids. So, like, mm -hmm. you've got buildings on buildings from every country. And there's, like, a dining hall in the middle. And then you get to go in there and eat. And, like, man, you walk in and you're like, oh, that's. Venus and Serena just eating, and oh, that's Nadal, and that's the NBA guys. They stay in the four seasons. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but but that's even more like you know. I'll tell you the story of what happened because I think that that's you know, you know, Peacock just picked up and did an hour and a half um, documentary on that specific race of that mm -hmm. gold medal, yeah. and I remember making. I made it by one one hundredth of a second. This is one of Michael's eight medals that he might not win. Mm. And um, everything was backwards. So our finals are usually at night, but they were in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I swam prelims, made it. And now here I am going through the night, getting ready for prelims in the morning. And it's like one o'clock in the morning. I'm like freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, I'm just freaking out. I can't mess this up. I can't mess this up. And Lock watching. Lochte's my roommate for life. He's over there snoring because nothing <laughs> bothers him. <laughs> and I'm freaking out. And bang, 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 bang. One o'clock in the morning, I open the door and it's MP, it's Mike. And I'm like, Phelps, bro, like, it's one o'clock. He goes, yo, all the NBA guys are downstairs. They want to wish us good luck. And I'm like, wait, what? And so I kick Lochte. I'm like, get up, all the NBA guys are downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so we run down. Everyone's downstairs. It was Kobe, LeBron, D. Wade, mm. Carlo Boozer, oh, Carmelo Anthony. Legendary moment. Leg man. All of them just sitting Legendary there and moment. they're just shaking hands like, yo, 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 yo. And like, girls' team's going crazy, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I walk out and, sorry, Mets fans, I had my Yankee fitted on. I was the <laughs> last one because I had to get my fitted. Ran through. And I'm sitting there shaking hands, and I'm like, oh my God, like these are the guys that, like, because I started basketball, but yeah. swimming took over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm a massive basketball head, and I'm shaking these guys' hands before the biggest race of my life. And then it gets real quiet, and only one person breaks the silence, and it's LeBron. And he's like, oh shit, there's a black dude on the swim team. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I die laughing. Everyone just busts out laughing. And from that point on, I was able to, like, break down the walls of just like the, for them they came in 
it wasn't about who they were or who we were. It was about Team USA. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Team they just saw us as athletes. Yeah. So the next day, I felt like Superman. Like, I was just, like, that was a sign to me. Yeah. And the next day, it played out the way it did. We weren't supposed to win. Like, we weren't fast enough on paper. Mm. And we swam beyond what we thought was possible, set a world record. And then I come home, and, like, people are recognizing me as I'm walking on the street. Yeah, it was just different. Yeah, man, you're all American. You're all American. You're all American Olympian, man. man. It's just my life changed immediately. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. I that just goes to show you, like, you can't. On paper, like a lot of times in our neighborhood, especially when I was talking to some of the guys in my neighborhood, I'm like, you can do this, you can do that. And I show them different quotes. I'm like, you can do, you can own, I can't own that, I can't do that, man. It's all I know is the streets. No, you can do anything you want to do. Yeah. Stop worrying about paper, because paper is telling you, people were telling you. I don't care if you went through something or you did the wrong thing. You, you're going off of what you feel as though people perceive of you. But you can do anything you want to do. You just have to know. And for Colin, it was him getting around a group of people and was like, you know what? Dang, that's crazy. I'm an Olympian too. Mm-hmm. Look at LeBron. Yeah. Look at all these guys. I'm with them. Yeah. And sometimes all it takes is self-awareness awareness to, for you to know who you are. And a lot of times as people, like we don't know who we are, no matter what color you are. You don't, we don't know who we are mm-hmm. and we don't know what we possess. So I just want people to know like you can do anything. You just have to first know you can. And that's how the mind works. You know? Yeah, absolutely. At the end of the day, on paper, nobody here is even supposed to be here right now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure. You know, so we got to understand that don't listen to what the norm is. You make the new norm. If people in your neighborhood are selling drugs or doing whatever they're doing, you be the new norm. You go get your degree or you go become an entrepreneur or you go take your life into your own hands. Don't let nobody ever tell you who you're supposed to be or who you're going to be. That's up to you and your destiny, man. Yeah, and that's it. And like one other thing I was going to talk about is what Colin said fits our model perfectly. He did the grind, he did the hustle, and now he's living life how he want to. That's for sure. But sometimes, a lot of times, you look on social media, you see these people, and you, you know, sometimes they're doing the right thing, and you just don't see the grind they go to because they don't glorify the grind. They glorify the, the, the after, after the work, yeah. the after effect, the luxury cars, the clothes, they don't glorify what got them there. So if you're looking at the play and the play is missing the piece and you're trying to skip to the end, which is a touchdown, you wonder why you can't touch down. It's because you never did what it took to get you to the end zone. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of times what social media do. And that's why we created this show to understand. Like Even with Colin, when he said that he took a lesser job and then he understood his role and then a bigger company came knocking. Mm-hmm. But first, he had to put that work in and get paid less than his value to understand what he needs to do. And then once people see him, because no matter who you are, you have a gift, no matter what that gift is. People just have to see it. So just keep grinding, and trust me, somebody will. But first, you got to put in the work and say, you know what? He said he hated every minute of it. <laughs> every minute yeah, of it. Yeah. But also, but also, also, also when you're putting in work, though, also when you're putting in work, uh, like a lot of work, people like people going to see you. Like yeah, People yeah. going to see you, and they're going to notice it. And then they're going to come. They're going to come knocking at your door. Well, like, speedo. Let well, your work speak louder than exactly. you, man. Like you said, I mean, going to the hospital, that, I mean, even that was a blessing. I didn't know what I was going to do. And Shells can tell you, I was a hustler since I was 15 years old. I had a job at 15. What was I doing? Lifeguarding. Lifeguarding. Teaching kids to swim. That's what I was doing. Oh, he was out there chilling. He you was always there. around the water. Always around the water. Always around the water. I, always around the I, water. Had, <laughs> I had four jobs when I was 18 in high school. Mm, That's four jobs in high school. That's a fact. And then here I am now. It's 2018. Here comes my kid. The hospital was a blessing afterwards. The first thing I did was I called Lifetime and I started giving lessons because I was like, I don't care what it is. Here I am, a multi-Olympian. I'm never going broke. I will go and I will teach kids to swim and I will go back to what I know first Mm -hmm. because I just, it's about my son now at this point. Mm -hmm. The hospital came later after that. So, I mean, like, you want to talk about the hospital. The hospital was here. Giving lessons? I was giving lessons for, for... damn near minimal minimum wage yeah. but it didn't matter because at that point it was like it was the hustle it was the hustle and then yes because one happened to another it happened to another but it because there's a lot of people that are afraid to humble themselves mm. 
to just do the grind. Yeah. If you want money and you think that a nine to five is going to get you to where those pictures of where the touchdown is, you are missing the, the <laughs> gate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, here's the thing. I work at Speedo. I have my own business that's Sprint 41. That is me yeah. as an ambassador for multiple sponsors and partnerships. What was my first thing I started doing when I didn't know what to do? I started working at Lifetime. Guess what I still do? Twice a week, I still give those kids lessons because I know that that is where I started when I came out of this swim career. Mm. I still can't. I'm not going to give up on those kids. So twice a, twice a week, I give those kids lessons. I'm tired as all hell. <laughs> I go back to the nine to five and I go back to the hustle of being an ambassador. But... You have to humble yourself. It doesn't matter. I don't care if you work in a Burger King and then you go to Starbucks. I don't care if you go from Starbucks to a corporate office. Half the people that have to live and work in here in New York, they work two, three jobs just right. to be able to yeah. pay rent. Yeah. So don't be afraid of the hustle because you don't know where the blessing is coming. It's coming yeah. if you're willing to put the work in. Yeah, you got to put the work If you want to own a bar, <laughs> guess what? You better learn how to work in that bar. If you want to own a McDonald's or Burger King, <laughs> guess what? You got to work in that McDonald's or Burger King. You know why? Because it's going to be so many things and so many facets of that business that you don't know what to do or how it works, then you're going to have unrealistic expectations and on top of that, not know the day-to-day and that's going to cause your business to fail. So you always got to get your hands dirty, especially when you're starting at the bottom, to be able to adjust yourself to get to the top. So Colin's on... Cullen, like we was talking about, you know, your journey and uh, you know, you had a lot of ups and then with the ups you also had downs and uh you said before that you got to a point where you didn't know where you was gonna go next. Yeah. So could you elaborate on yeah, that? Yeah, definitely. Um so what a lot of people don't <laughs> it's funny that because of how big the two thousand eight Olympics was and the world record was set, I actually was the first black American to set the world record in two thousand six. And so my life changed. I signed a six-year deal with Nike, and my name was everywhere. I was the fastest yeah. man in the world, on the planet. And t- yeah, 2007. Name and, popping off. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I put <laughs> in the work. That's not just gloss over. That's not just the end. We're going to come back to that. We're going to come back to that. We're going to come back to that. 2007, I got second. I was annoyed, and then the next like month, I went off and then got, got it again. So, fastest in the world, 2007. I'm going towards 2008, and our trials are always in um, June. Mm-hmm. And so, here I am, February, and I'm feeling like I'm not going to make the team. And because I knew what my coach was like putting up on the board, I was like, oh, we're going to do this today, or we're going to do that today. I just felt like I was in a rut and plateauing. Um, and I remember sitting there on a Tuesday and I called our national team director for USA Swim and I was like, look, I need a change. And at that time, um, the one of a world renowned coach, David Marsh was in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is only two and a half hours away. Mm -hmm. And I had just bought my house in Raleigh. I thought Raleigh was going to be it, but now I'm in this rut and I'm like, what is the most important thing? Like I, I could stay here where I'm comfortable comfortable like I got a house I, I went to school here for four years I've got all my friends here yeah. <clears throat> or is the Olympics the most important thing for me and I remember like I need to get out of here it was like it was pounding in my head you got to get out of here you got to get out of here and at the same time my brother over here is down Your in boy. Charlotte and I'm like yo I need to come down to Charlotte and he's like oh yeah come on down yeah we're gonna have a good time I was like <laughs> No, nah, I mean, like, live with you. And he was like, what? And I was like, and I explained everything. And he goes, say no more. That night, I packed my car. And I drove to Charlotte. I didn't even call my coach. I didn't even call Marsh. <laughs> I just, mm. like, I just, just knew. I, I just went. Yeah. And so I, I was on my way there. I was already in the car. I called him. He goes, all right, wait, you're on your way now? And, and Marsh is like, all right, well, I'll see you tomorrow morning for practice. Shells was already ready. I came to the door. The door was open. He's like, here, here's your bed. Go to sleep. You got practice in the morning. <laughs> and I was like, all right, man. I, like, I barely unpacked. I got my suit out. 
I got my goggles out. I fell asleep, and I was at practice the next morning. And then I called my coach. My coach was like, I, I had everything set up. And I was like, we were going to do this, 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 and this. And he was like, how did you know that? And I was like, and that's why I have to leave. Mm. I uprooted my life three months before trials, right. which is unheard of. Yeah. And you want to talk about fear? That's fear. Not knowing where I've signed this multi-year contract. When I told Nike what I did, they were not happy with me. <laughs> um, but it turned out to be the best decision. But I knew that I needed that change. And right. I know we kind of talked, stepped on, you know, we need to support each other. Yeah. And honestly, if you weren't there for me, I, I wouldn't have that. I honestly don't believe I'd have that. Well, he said it on camera, so he can't take it back now. He can't take it back now. America, thank you, boy. So, like, oh, that's, like, something I wanted to piggyback off and just talk about. A lot of times, like, even with my circle of friends, you know, Heath, uh, Shells, D, and different other people that's around me, we always, oh, don't worry about it, man. I got it. I do it myself. I got it. You know, and D, if you want to talk about it, you can talk about it. It was going through like a, a, a downturn in his life. And I was like, D, why you ain't telling me? He was like, nah, man, I was straight. And I'm like, bro, what are yeah. you talking about? Like, yeah, I could, I could talk on that. Like, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was like a moment in my life where, you know, me and Matt, we dabbled in like a lot of street stuff when we was younger, though. But as we got older, you know, Matt kind of made the transition into, you know, working. And me, I still was like, you know, outside, as you could say, you know. And I was getting into trouble a lot, you know. And uh, air time, I go somewhere, come back. I won't never say nothing to nobody, like, and like a whole stuff. Like I'm, I'm, you could say homeless, like, but I ain't saying nothing though, like. And Matt see me, Matt kinda know, but he like, yo, D, you hungry? Or, yo, you yeah, you can have that shirt. It's brand new. He never wore. It. He just give it to me. Mm -hmm. So he, it's like it's like he know, but I'm not saying nothing. So. It's but that, that's what happened in our community. Like, you could pride. be going through them trials and tribulations and you don't say nothing, so it'd be like, oh, wow. But yeah, like, I, I know exactly where he's coming from, but I definitely was a victim of that type of uh, stigma in, like, yeah. in our culture, like, not yeah. saying nothing as people going through things. And it's but, not just black America, it's men in general. Yeah, We have yeah. the highest suicide rates. Yeah. Have, and, and a lot of it is just because we don't talk about stuff. We were taught not to talk about stuff. Not, not to cry. Not, man, to cry. not to cry. Not to cry. Like, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Yo, there is no more manly thing than to be successful. But yeah. how do you do that? Sometimes you have to stand on the shoulders of giants to do that. I, yeah. was, I did not get where I am today by myself. And, and no other it. successful person. No. Like, no other successful no, person. Like, you man. study these million, billion, trillionaires. Like, nobody never did it by themselves. Everybody mm. had some help. Some type of help. Exactly. Now, it might have not been a lot, but it's somebody, a hand. Right. Some, it might have been a hand somewhere. Like, they bouncing so, ideas off exa somebody. Exa exactly. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Like, and even with companies. Like, when mm -hmm. you look at that Ford, that Ford is, Ford is doing a collaboration. They're not getting all the tires. Do the tires say Ford? No. Do the brakes say for it? No. Good point. So they're doing collaborations with other companies to be able to do what? To build something great, which is their company, Ford, Mercedes, no matter who it is. They have to outsource and, and build and make partnerships. Like even when Dia came to a point, because I know him as a friend, I know how I am because you grew up in the same neighborhood. I ain't even ask, I didn't ask him no more. I said, do you looking for a job? Come on. Let's talk about Let's do an interview. Let's do a mock interview. Yeah. Yeah. Where are these? Where are that? Take that. That's yours. Man, I don't want it. Bro, I'm not taking it back. Where that? Boom. Because I know if I pay it for it, just like today, I need Derek. For us to be able to do what we're doing, all three of us put in. We put, our, we put our money together to be able to do this. I can't do this on my own. I have too many bills. If I didn't have Derek, if I didn't have shells, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. So I paid it for it. D got to a place where he needed to go. Now I need D. Mm -hmm. Every night we go to a house, we, we started to do wholesaling, real estate, and flipping houses. I need Derek. If Derek is not coming to the house with me, I don't have anybody to help me. I need him. I'm not ashamed to say I need another man. Mm -hmm. I need him. He my brother for real. You know, and Derek, no, I keep my circle. I'm like, yeah, I'm like you. you. Yeah, he you like you. Gotta keep it tight, man. Yeah. I do not, I keep my circle very, 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 very small. And that's hard for me to talk to new people. So that's why everybody that's in my circle, I just make sure I take care of them the best I can. Cause I know I'm not letting it was I was shocked that I'll 
I know why you mess with shells. Yeah. Because I don't mess with people. Yeah. You know, he know I'm friendly, I laugh and stuff like that, but I don't let anybody close let to me. Yeah. And when I met shells, it was so natural. It and plus instant. I seen it was instant. And I seen something in him. And I never he never even told me, you know, what happened between you two and how but I see that in him. Yeah. That's why I invited yeah. him in my circle because yeah. I just want guy. people He's solid. Exactly. I just want people to treat me like I would even if that day never come. I just want somebody to show me the same grace that I showed them. And that's why I don't let a lot of people win because yeah. I know some people, a lot of people are not going to do that. Yeah. You know? So I just want to say, like, whoever your core group of guys is, stop always saying you could do it. No, you need a collaboration sometimes. If you want to do a bar, which he is doing, or different things like mm -hmm. what we're doing, yeah. you need men to lean on other people with your same vision to lean on. And I'm, that more than likely is going to be your brother, what you consider to be your brother. Mm -hmm. So understand that to get to that plateau, you need somebody to help climb to get there. All right. So, Cullen, in 2006, you buzzing, name popping, you the hottest in the streets. Yeah. The fastest Nike, in the streets. Fastest. Fast right. in, the water, yeah. in the water. In the, in the water. Fast okay. in the water. Yeah. Nike comes. Yeah. I wanted to know, like, what was your process? Like, you young at the time. Yeah. So, like, what was your thought process and what, like, what was on your mind? Like, what would you? His thought process was. <laughs> He used to wear Nikes with checks. Now he getting checks from Nike. Whoa! Oh, bars! Bars! Absolutely. Absolutely. I still got it. Chill. Right. <laughs> My bad. All right. I'm Brought him out of retirement so, real quick. Just for a second. I think Nike was a little mad. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because I signed the deal before I got the world record. Mm. So it was in my contract that I got bonuses. Mm. So most contracts get bonuses. And a lot of people think, they're like, well, how do you make money in swimming? It's just like basketball. You know, if, if LeBron wins a certain amount of games, there's bonuses and incentives. Oh, okay. So I had bonuses and incentives. And so they signed me at a really nice number. And then I tripled it in a month. Mm. And oh. it was... It, it was a, they were happy, they were proud of obviously everything mm. that I did, but it made them have to take me a lot more serious mm. um, at that point because I wasn't just, you know, a new hire. I was like, oh, he's he's got some equity here. So, yeah. um, he that guy. Yeah, <laughs> he that dude. Yeah, like I, I, I kind of showed, I showed out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And so I was with Nike for six years um, and I made the choice to go with Nike because, not because of Jordan, but it was a nice factor. <laughs> the the gear was the gear. The gear. I, 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 I was going to say I like, the oh Nike God. gear. My house is filled with shoes. Still. <laughs> oh yeah, day. still. Still to this day, it's filled. Got it's got a, a couple of closets. How much you had? And I'll be pulling out stuff. People like, well, where'd you? It never released. Oh, wow. released. so the future champs, you just go into the Nike store and you just be like, da 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 da, or you take you to like the main oh, headquarters. Man. How did that work? So if there were sneakers that I wanted, it was in my contract that all I had to do was ask for it. Ooh. Wow. So, so stuff that wasn't even released, they just... No, I had a, I had a plug for that. Oh, okay. I had a, oh, friend. Okay. I had a okay. friend inside right. that, that would send me stuff for that. Oh, okay. Um, you still got that friend? Nah. Look at Shell. Look at Because you know he's a sneaker fanatic. He moved on to a different brand. Um, and uh, the other part is, so for the shoe thing, any Nike town, I would get like... 5k mm -hmm. that I can go in like three four times a year Dang. and go in and just go nuts and go 5k for mm -hmm. yeah so and then on top of that whenever we went to um if you go out to Portland mm -hmm. they have the employee store so you're getting the athlete discount and the employee discount mm -hmm. the employee discount is already 40 percent the athlete mm -hmm. discount is another 40 percent so they almost <laughs> free <laughs> <laughs> they almost exactly. free you're basically <laughs> just going like yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're almost free i mean it, it was it, it's Look, you work your ass off all your life yeah. for, the, for, yeah. these, for these moments. Um, Absolutely. And then after six years, I really started thinking about it was, I was in that age where mm -hmm. we were going out, we were having a good time. We had tables at yes, Live, we, we had tables at Avenue and One Oak and Vegas, and we were just going nuts because. At that time, we were young, dumb, and stupid. Can I say something, though? Can I say something about that? Young, dumb, and stupid? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> this man is the reason why... Oh, shit. Maybe I should stop you. No, 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 no. This man is the reason why I don't even... I didn't even like partying in my 20s anymore. Because it got so extravagant 
yeah. with the VIP tables, and we <laughs> next to Buster Rhymes, we next to Chris Brown, we next to all these different cats. Then when I went back to the old neighborhood, they want to go down to <laughs> <laughs> Alice's or whatever. No disrespect. <laughs> But it's like, it ain't the same no more. Yeah, like, same, you know what I mean? Like, I, I ain't even going out no I'm more. Like, if I ain't going out with them, I'm not going out. But, but here's here was the, yes, like, we love to party. We love to have a good time. Yeah. We were in our 20s. We wanted to do those yeah, things. Yeah, you work hard, you play hard. Right. But the, the biggest thing for me was we kept talking about, or in the Bronx grew up in Irvington, mm. EO, mm. you know, um, Newark, Irvington. Mm-hmm. My life changed so much that I was traveling. I was going to, I was going to Italy. I was going to like yearly. I was going Rome, to, Italy. Rome, I was going all over yeah, the place. He was everywhere. And then I would come home, and I wanted to share that with my crew, mm. you know, my my people. I yeah. was like, look, like we've got to we got to elevate because this is what that other half is doing, and this yeah. is what we should be working towards. And kids from where we grew up, they don't necessarily see it unless they're watching a music video. Yeah, true. And so when I came home, it was one of my things where, where I like I talked to my circle, like, yo, look, this is, we got to do better. We got to get, look, this is what the other half is doing. So yes, did I want to party and have a good time? Yes, but I wanted to share that with my closest friends that helped right. me get there. Yeah. And I didn't care like what it was. It was it was more about sharing that experience. Right. And you just wanted to show them that's attainable. It when is, somebody man. knows it's attainable, it then is. it is. We didn't see it before then. In the 2000s, yeah. we didn't see it before then. I was, I was a terrace ballroom guy. I was a <laughs> guy. I was, uh, <laughs> you know, St. John. Whatever. I was John. Like, yeah, yeah. And, and, John. And, and, that's, and that's what we're missing, especially in our culture. A lot of people that live in my neighborhood, I can speak for us, is that so people are, so many people are so willing to give away life because they don't know it's more to life. Mm. Strong. And once you start to say it again, say it again. That's so many people are willing to give away life because they don't know is more to life. And once you start to know and go places and do things and explore and see these things, like even me myself, I went to a couple places and I start seeing these things outside of my neighborhood, and I was like, whoa! I stopped being so willing to give away my life or to get into. Uh, bad interactions with people. Like, ah, you can have that. Go ahead. Whatever. Say whatever you want to say. It's okay. And I started yeah. walking away from that because I knew, like, man, it's more to life than that. Oh, what you guys don't understand, this guy is a boxer. <laughs> 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 don't let the, don't let his ankles out for you. <laughs> let the little guitar shirt fool you, the nice, clean cut. No, <sighs> this guy's a boxer. <laughs> Be cool. Well, go back. Go back to you. <laughs> so, a lot of times with that, you just know you know what, it's more for me. And that's why I want a lot of people to elevate and try to do other things, like start businesses and do different things. Because when you know something around the corner waiting for you, you're not going to let the door close in your face from an interaction or just a bad conversation with somebody. And I think that's why I'm trying to pre- everybody, I'm going to focus on our neighborhoods first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, first you got to conquer where you're from first. And yeah. I want to definitely go to Newark, East Orange, West Orange. I'm going to get as most people as possible to start teaching them different things and making them financially aware so they can experience different things. And if you can make, if you can enlighten somebody on that mindset, a lot of things will stop. Right. Because yeah. a lot of these young people are seeing nothing and not understanding they can do something. And they're like, you know what? My rep, my reputation is who I am. So if you, if I feel as though that's in danger, that's the only thing I have to live off of. So I'm going to go all out for that. I'm going to give my life away for that. Because if I don't have my reputation, if I don't have my respect, then I'm not, I'm not nothing. It's mm-hmm. just like this. If you only have your four corners, you're going to stay in the box. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's just True. what it is. True. All right, so I just wanted to speak about like, how do you get an endorsement? Do you reach out? Mm. Do your agent reach out? How does it actually work? So uh, my my situation was a little bit different, but normally, yeah, you would probably go the agent route first and then reach out. There's some people that are savvy enough to just go ahead and reach out directly to a brand. Mm. Um, now, as the senior manager of sports marketing for uh, Speedo. I'm in charge uh, with two other ladies of signing those contracts to pick up the next swimmer, the mm. next Michael Phelps. Mm. Well, right now it's Caleb Dressel and Ryan Murphy, but um, shout out to Scott. Yeah, that's that's really my job now is to look over that contract and do that. So I'm kind of on the other side; it's kind of come full circle. Mm. But my experience of that was, um, I swam that summer, I got second, and I was upset because I wanted all the brands to want me at that mm. time. 
um, TYR, which is here, is how it's pronounced. Speedo had approached me, but man, I really wanted Nike. Mm. And I got second. And I remember <clears throat> I was in China. And when I touched, I was upset, walking down the stairs. And the guy, Shane, at the time, he goes, yells from the top, Colin, Colin, we don't drop our heads from in Nike. And threw me his card. And I grabbed it and was like, <laughs> 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 and um i remember like going home and honestly i was <laughs> i got so you got it maybe i was no that was that that was funny yeah. Andrew. Hey, yo, how did that even happen? Because look at the no, screen. No, the screen Android, man. Get that joke out of here, man. Yo, that wasn't my phone. Your shit was listening. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, I think that was a hack. Sad just happened, yo. You can endorse us. You know what I'm saying? Free our phones around. You know what I'm saying? We rocking with you. Forget those guys. I don't know what just happened. That was that was weird. That was. I gotta switch my gang now. iPhone, I'm gonna switch it over to the iPhones now, man. That was that was. Yo, it's funny because they were just talking about it. All of a sudden, that just happened. I don't know, man. I don't know. Really? Yeah, that's that's crazy. You're still I don't the streets, know. they follow your phone, man. What's up? Man? I don't know. Man. I ain't doing nothing illegal. So. <laughs> we promise. So I, I get the card. Um, I, at that point, I didn't have an agent, mm -hmm. and um, I started looking, and uh, I ended up going with uh, a more boutique because there's a lot of big agencies, CAA, mm -hmm. and there's also like uh, Wilhelmina. Um, I wanted to go with a boutique because I felt like I wanted more um, care and I wanted my agent to actually be like, know who I am and not be in a roll up of a bunch of people. So um, I signed Nike that year because of, uh, and I started learning like the process of like what a contract looks like, like mm. what, or, but what are the bonuses? What does that look like? Because this was a whole brand new world to me. And yeah. I mean, honestly, it looked like Latin. Like I was like, what? all of this, like, if I don't do this, or if I wear a hat that's Nike at this time, then I get a bonus, or, like, oh, when I get out of the pool, I need to do... There's just so many ins and outs to the contract that I felt like I needed help with it, so the agent route was always a very good route for me. Um, I ended up switching in 2014 to go to CAA, which is the largest um, company, and then my agent, Lowell, um, shout out to Lowell, he's, a, he's great, he's got his own... Um, uh, boutique again now mm -hmm. called Stoked, and I I stayed loyal, so I'm with him now. Oh, so but okay. the agent the agent route was the best route I could have made. So yeah. the advantages of trying to find an agent, in your opinion, is just like going with a boutique, so you can like make sure they're there with you every step of the process, instead of going with like a bigger company that has so many people they can't really pay one person attention, especially if you're not on. Or you get shifted to someone that else you yeah. might get the big person that heads it they'll talk to you get you excited about the company and then they'll push you off to someone else who's mm. maybe a more junior Being switched, person yeah. and I just I wasn't interested in that yeah. and I wanted the person that I had the interview with to be my agent mm. okay. I didn't want to be pushed to someone else mm. and so it was very important to me that I had that when I went to CAA Lowell was the head of Olympic sport he had Sean White he had my boy Ryan yeah. Lochte he had uh, Gabby Douglas. I mean, he um, signed to Richard Ross. So he had the lineup. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I was proud to be a part of that lineup. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, yeah, this is where I want to be. And he was like, I'm not pushing you to anybody else. I have people that I work with. Mm -hmm. But you're going to see me. And I was mm -hmm. like, all right. And he, he was true to his word. And that's why I still stay with him now. Mm -hmm. And um, throughout that process of like, what as an athlete do you feel is time for you to be able to get an agent? Do you do it? Do you think because you went through the whole process? Is mm -hmm. it before you start to create the buzz? You start to reach out to try to lock everything in, or is it when you get that Nike car flipped at you? I think when it comes to looking for an agent, the buzz has to be there. Because let's, I mean, if you know somebody and they're nice enough to just be your agent, cool. Um, they can rep you. It's not like they're going to get paid unless mm. you sign yeah. a deal. Mm. So yeah, I mean, it's fine to look after, look out for one if you have. The buzz around you um, that helps to to leverage like 
your talking power to mm -hmm. certain agents because agents also have a choice they have a choice whether they want to take you on or not mm -hmm. yeah. it's not going to just be like oh yeah well we'll just take anybody mm -hmm. you know and if there is an agent that says we'll just take anyone so you got to have some type of buzz be, before yeah, you go looking you know, for agents. I mean and, and at the time I had I had six of the best. Now nah, you was that guy. You you was that guy. I, I created the buzz. <laughs> yeah, you was that. You was that guy to create the buzz. Okay. So all right, man. You know, you, you've spoken about all the great things that you've done. I mean, it's so many accolades. It's so many things that we could talk about that we can talk about for hours and hours and hours. But I really want you to talk to me about Sprint Forty One and what that is. Yeah. So Sprint Forty One actually started um, because of my dad. It was right after my, uh, I just finished college and my girlfriend at the time asked me to come to a swim event and my thought process, which we talk about each other doing, is like, no, nah, they don't want me to be there. Yeah. And I ended up going and I sat there for two and a half hours signing autographs with kids. And my first autograph, I started signing and I don't know what it was, but I put 41. And that was my dad's basketball jersey number. Now in swimming, mm. we don't get numbers. So it was like an immediate, it felt like someone was moving my hand. Feel right. Wow. It was the weirdest feeling, and I, I don't use the word weird. It was, I know who was doing it, mm. but 41. I've never not signed something with 41 on it. And so Sprint, obviously because I'm a sprinter, yeah. Sprint 41 for at that point was kind of, it became my my muse at that point it was like okay this is what i do this is this is who i am yeah and i decided at that point that i wanted to start a business um and that was going to be my public speaking you know we went to church mm -hmm. mom used to make me read the announcements i hated it it was something that scared the living <laughs> hell out of me i hated sitting in front of people and reading these announcements i still don't love it but I remember the, the, the head of USA Swimming at the time, Chuck Wilgus, massive mentor to me. He said, you know, with your story, you could probably be more successful by telling your story than even swimming. Mm. And so I started just diving deep into public speaking. And yeah. so I started watching Richard Pryor. <clears throat> I started watching Raw and watching Eddie. And then, of course, Chappelle. Yeah, the classic. Timing One of the, the, the time and jokes. Yeah. And I got so deep into it that I started going to places and Make a Splash was born at this point. So I was going and telling my story and talking about like learning to swim and saying, you know, when I was five, I almost drowned. And I started like making it a persona and making it a character. Yeah. And yes, I want you to feel bad for me because I almost drowned, but I also want to bring you back up because I want you to know how important it is to learn to swim. Mm. So I started taking the timing and all of the things that I learned from these great comedians and implementing it into my public speaking. And it started there and it just grew and it grew and it grew. I started doing talks for Boeing. They were doing a massive <clears throat> multi-billion dollar merger and I spoke, mm. I, they wanted me to speak. Wow. Nice check. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've done it for McDonald's. I've done it for Bank of America, Citibank. Uh, Deloitte had me on for a minute, and I and I loved every bit of it. But like, that's what started Sprint Forty One was the public speaking oh. and me as an athlete and going around and doing these talks. Um, then it started with I was starting to be an ambassador for different groups. You know, learn to swim and all of these different um, organizations and partnerships there. So. Stern 41 was born in 2009, and it's been me running around doing public speaking, of course, but also any partnership that I that I can can bring towards myself and the company. Yeah. It was born. Yeah, that's dope. And then that's I still have the nine to five, of course. Yeah, <laughs> you ever uh, you ever think about writing a book? So I do have a book. Oh, you do? I do have a book. It was actually What's the name ghost, ghost written. Um, Speed to Glory. It's a it's a children's book. Still, so we can link that. Book. You can link that. Yeah, it, you can it's link a children's that. book. Speed to glory. Speed to speed glory. glory. Speed to glory. Remember yeah. that. Speed to glory. Um, what can I get it? I'm sorry. What, what can they get? Oh, you can find it on Amazon. It's all. It's, it's definitely speed on Amazon. to glory. Speed to glory. Um, speed to glory. I'm put the link in the bio. <laughs> there you yeah, go. Definitely. <laughs> um, so definitely, it, it was important for me to do that, mm -hmm. um, and especially to target 
speaking to children. Um, now, you have your book. It's on Amazon, mm -hmm. and you also do like speaking engagements and things like that. Right. Um, like, how do you like? Does your agent book that, or how do you go about that? So yes, a lot of times my agent will book that. Um, I stopped with the my website just because. I was paying for it every year, and mm. I just wasn't getting the traffic for that. But uh, another way of doing it were speakers bureaus, and so the way speakers bureaus work is, you basically they vet out whether they want you on it. And uh, again, buzz, you have enough <laughs> buzz, yeah, you they will bring you on. And um, I've been doing it for so long. I think I'm on three or four, and uh, you know, Shaq has them, Charles Barkley has them, yeah. and so. I mean, even Bill Clinton, who is probably the best orator on this planet, um, <laughs> he's on them. So, you know, it, it's it's a great way to get your name out there, your face out there, and for companies to, to align. So that's how I got Boeing. That's how I got McDonald's and all of these other brands. Yes, some of them reach out directly to your agent if they want you specifically. But a lot of them, it's a catalog so that they can just kind of look through and be like, I want someone to speak about swimming and motivation. Hmm, Dara Torres, Colin Jones, Michael Phelps, da, 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 mm, this one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. And, and uh, his basic there's one other thing at Speedo, because you say you, you now you start to look and see what upcoming swimmer yeah. you look to invest in and put the brand Speedo on. Ooh. How do what's the process for young swimmers? Cause that's what I want to do as well, just to try to help your organization. I want to get people to expand their mind and do more than just the norm and every since because right. you can only have so many basketball players. You can only have so many football right. players. Yeah. It's so many other avenues that you can use. Because that might not be your gift. You have to find your gift like he found his. So, like, what do you look at as far as, you know, is it, like, the track times? If it, What do you actually look at? Oh, is it, like, the behavior or is it the personality? Or? It's a great question. So, I think with... Social media with this N N N double A N double A N C double A uh, N I L rules. Like I, I think that now brands have to find holistic athletes. Mm -hmm. It's not just enough to be good at what you do. You have to be a brand. Mm -hmm. You can't just swim fast. You can't just run fast. You can't just dunk really really well. No, you have to be able to speak. You have to be able to have a great social media. You have to know how to handle yourself in a situation when you're in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to do all of these things. So I don't know any brand that's sitting here and just evaluating athletes just on performance anymore. You want to make it? You want to do something? You kind of have to be the whole package now. And I'm sorry that it, if, if you think that that's hard. I've been doing it for 12 years. Mm -hmm. You have to be a brand, right. and I think that that at this point, I'm happy to see it be doing going in that direction because, um, it, it's what companies want. It's what ultimately will grow sports in general. Um, you know, and you, you talked about social media, and you talked about how people don't always put up the hard work. Like you see LeBron on a yacht. You see LeBron, you know, playing, of course, and you see LeBron at his son's games and stuff, but you don't recognize the fact that he's up doing crunches at five. He's spent a million dollars in keeping himself in the game. Body, right? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like you don't see him in the cryo chamber. You don't see him doing all of these other things. But that's what this holistic brand is. That means this man gets up at five. And it's probably going from five to 12 every day. Because he's got, Crazy. he's got uh, Sprite, he's got Nike, he's got his own probably companies that he's, uh, and he's got a team. Children. Behind. He's got <laughs> children. You know, you know what I'm Tom too. Everybody wants a husband. Yeah. It's, it's, he's a whole brand. Yeah. yeah. And you're not going to pay that money for somebody who's just going to be like, okay, I play basketball real good. And talk like that? No. A lot of people play basketball real good that no. don't get that. <laughs> you know, and it's now, a lot of people if you play. even watch some of these young Players now that are coming out of the um, coming out of um, college, they're speaking better. Have you noticed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they are yeah, all speaking so yeah. much better, and they're they're understanding the game now. It's now trickling into other sports. Right. Um, so it, it's it's that's what we're looking for. We're looking mm -hmm. for brands. Right. All right. Well, I have a two part question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, the first part of the question is, what would you want to say to your five year old self? right now if you could mm -hmm. talk to your five-year-old self the second thing 
what would you tell the next Cullen Jones? And I don't mean the next Cullen Jones as far as for, you know, in swimming, but just the next kid that is about to take a leap into a sport or some type of business or some some type of venture period that we haven't been in, but that this person's taking a chance to become successful in. I love this question. I love this question because I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't tell myself anything. I would got you here. I wouldn't be here if I didn't lose. I didn't lose. I didn't mess up. I didn't like. I'm still messing up daily. Ask my wife. I'm still <laughs> messing up. <laughs> but that's one thing being but, human, though. But that's being human. <laughs> that's right? being human. And do you know how long it took me to get to that point? Oh my god. What I would tell 2016. Bitcoin, Colin, Bitcoin. <laughs> like, you know, I would tell myself so many yeah. different things, but like, I still have to tell myself, look, you're not where you want to be, but you're going to still hustle and grind to get there. Right, you absolutely. just got to keep pushing. You just got to keep pushing. You know, so many people sit back and they're like, well, you do so much, you do so much. Yeah, okay. Because at some point, I'm going to be done and I'm going to be chilling with y'all. I just hope that we're smoking cigars, like, like Steve Harvey said. On the south side of France. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the yacht. On the yacht. Right. I'm going to keep working until yacht. that's what we're yeah, at. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and, and so it's, I wouldn't tell my five-year-old self anything. Yeah. Not even to not go on that ride where you almost drowned. You need to I wouldn't change it. You need to go down that route. Yeah. Because that changed your life. And that helped build character. Correct. When it comes to other kids, be yourself, man. Dare to be different. Do other things. Don't let anyone, you know, it sounds cliche, but it's true. Like, we talked about us, right? Like, in, back then it was like, oh, my God, you're not wearing this. You're not doing this. Yeah. These kids now have so many avenues to, to, to be whoever they want to be. It's okay to be you now. Yeah, and it's, and it's fun. Like, I watch my son, and he mimics me, and I'm like, do what you want to do, man. And, then, like, at some point, like... I don't want to limit him in what he, his thought processes are. Because yeah. I see how he does things where I see his mother and I see me and I see his, his, his uncle. I see all of these different facets of him. I don't want to change that. Don't, right. don't just be like me. Be, be his you, you. You know? And I'm, I want you to challenge me. It keeps yeah. me young. <laughs> yeah, right, right, That's right. dope. That's dope. That's dope. Well, I mean, for the audience that's watching... <laughs> If this man doesn't exemplify grinding, hustling, and living, I don't know who else does then. <laughs> and because of that, we got a special gift for my brother. So let's Thank clap you. it up. Appreciate let's clap. Listen, Appreciate listen. You. He's the first one to receive this. Oh. I don't know if you can see it there in the world, in the metaverse, but he's getting the first official Grind, Hustle, Live plaque because he has grinded. He's hustled, and now he's living how he wants to, and he's going to live even more like he wants to because he's going to keep grinding. Yes, sir. So you see a man who's accomplished a lot of things, he's still grinding like he still has five cents in his pocket. Yeah. So if you really got five cents in your pocket and you're not grinding like this, it's only your fault at that point. My brother, you have earned this. Thank you, thank you. It's thank not a gold you. medal. No, but it's going, but it's going next to the SB, though. It's going next oh, to the SB. It's, it's going, going next, next to the SB. There you go. It's going next to the SB, man. I appreciate man. you, brother. And, thank you. And, appreciate and you. And not only is my brother Cullen getting the plaque, but my two brothers here, man. Oh, well, he oh, came with, oh, well he's going deserved. off, huh? Well deserved. Uh -oh. Listen, let me tell you about this guy named Matthew. This guy, Matthew, has supported me. Supported D. He has been at the front of the ship, driving this ship to Absolutely. success. It's been so many Captain times. Matt. It's been Captain so Matt. many times that I made excuses of why I didn't want to do this or why I can't do this. And he has consistently been that positive figure in my life, along with my brother and along with, you know, D, to say, bro, no excuses. We're going to get success and I'm going to drag your ass to success. Yeah, you got to do it. Sometimes you got to do that. I, well, listen, I've watched my brother go through down times and ups, and he's always stayed consistent as far as knowing what he wants and going to get what he wants. That's why I believe him on his journey that we're going to be on, that we're going to eventually get to that finish line and in the south of France smoking cigars. There you go. Oh, 
that's my boy. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, oh it's heavy. This <laughs> he went in his heavy. pocket this time. Oh, <laughs> that's heavy. Now let's get to my boy D Money. Derek, <laughs> my boy D Money. This guy, you guys didn't get to see the beginning growth till now. Yeah. But my brother, man, since I've known him, I've seen him come from not even wanting to talk on camera. Nope. He didn't want to say, he was still afraid of camera like it was interrogation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but my brother has, he's read all these books. He's gotten his mind right. He's educated himself. He's learned things. He's put me on things. He's gone surpass knowledge that I know about a lot because he was dedicated to say, listen, this is where I met, but this is where I want to be. And my boy has grinded, my boy has hustled, and he's going to live how he wants to, and that's the reason why my brother gets this, man. I appreciate you, appreciate man. Appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. Appreciate now, you. now, appreciate now, you. usually we don't do this. No, 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 no. Oh, we oh, 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 oh we going to do You can't, can't give yourself an award without other people talking about you. I'm going to hand it to Matthew first, and then we're going to go around and talk shit. I mean, talk about shells over here. All right, man, listen to this. Now, you know. I met Shells and I thought it was weird that he had a screen door as a beard and you could see right through it. But he overcame that and still became my friend, which is hard battery because I don't know what that is. But it's all right though. I got something for I got another award. It's called Michael Fiber. I found this going to test. I knew he was going to fuck now, it. I knew he was going to fuck it. Now, y'all see his ankles though, right? <laughs> 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 Shell's been a friend to me, and I don't let nobody really close to me, nobody. And as soon as I met Shell's, I just knew that he was a genuine person. And I knew, like, what changed? Like, we went to the gym, and I said, let me see what this guy's about. We went to the gym, and we was hitting pads. I'm like, come on, he said you want to lose weight. And he hitting the pads. And he's like, yo, man, I'm tired. Remember the pads? So I said, man, it's all in your mind, man. Push past it. And he kept going. He's like, all right, no problem. He kept going, kept pushing. And that's when I realized, I said, man, this guy's like me. He has determination. He's able to use willpower to overcome. And anybody in my circle, they have to be able to overcome because things are going to happen in your life that you can't just look over or glance over. You're going to have to have a mountain in front. You got to climb it. And when I seen he was able to have the willpower to keep going, me and him became instant friends after that. And everything I ever needed, he always been there. And he had his times. I had my times. Right. But he always kept me in check. You know, sometimes... I go off the rail. He's like, Matt, mm -mm, we got to we gotta focus. We got somewhere we got to go. Sometimes I'm like, Shells, come on, you got to focus. It might be in different ways, but we both keep each other in alignment, and we both keep each other going. So I'm just going to pass this over to Colin, and he's right. going to be able to say his piece as well. Oh, man. Yeah, man. So, Shells, I've known you since we were 15. No, before, before that. Before that. Okay. Well, let's just say, yeah, probably about 10. Uh, we went to church together. We've cried together, we've fought together, we've laughed together, we've got pulled over by the cops together. Yes, we That's have. a whole other story. We're about. <laughs> That's a different podcast. That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> different um, podcast. But you've always been there, man. Right. And I, I remember, you know, coming home and, and having this medal, and it, you came up to me and you just hugged me and was like, I was happy, bro. I don't even know what to say to you. I was like, I don't know what to say to you either. But we just sat there for a minute and just took in the fact, and, and it wasn't like envy, which is something Never. that like so many people go through. It was you were genuinely proud of me, and I have always kept you close to me because I knew that you would help me continue the way I wanted to help you continue. Facts. Um, so I'm not going to get emotional on this. <laughs> I was like, like he's going he, he to take me there on camera, but, damn. But what I'm going to say is, is that we're family. For life. And um, you deserve every bit of this. And I know you're not done. There's so much more to be done for all of us. But I know that as hard as you push, it's going to come. Appreciate whatever you're looking bro. for, whatever that next step is that you want, whether it's cigars in the south of France, <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Is coming, so I'm gonna pass it. I appreciate that, my Derek. brother. Pass All right, that's nice. All right, my turn. Let's present my brother Shells, aka Marta. Marta. You know, <laughs> uh, 
Well, I just want to say to you, man, I really appreciate you, man. Uh, you was an inspiration to me from the beginning. Appreciate you know, that. even when it came to the cameras, you know, I ain't like being on the cameras, and yeah. you also gave me that confidence to not be afraid of the cameras, and also just had confidence going forward in this journey that we got going on. So I really, really appreciate that. And just being on the team, man, I appreciate that too, man. Be able to call you my brother. Come on, man. You know, <laughs> you know how we rocking, man? Yeah, absolutely, man. So this hustless plaque, Come on, man. you deserve it, man, on, by all man. means, man. And you too, appreciate y'all too, man. Matt, you already know you my brother. You already know how we get down. We all Cullen, brothers, man. Listen, man, you part of the family. Absolutely, you man. already know, man. I appreciate you too, man. So with no further ado, come on, hand it to me. Hand it to me. <laughs> hand it to me. <laughs> yeah, it's official now. Listen, listen man, man, we all hold them up. Let's yes. just hold them up. Let's hold we them all, up. We all show Absolutely. a hustle's plaque, man. GHL, man. GHL. You gotta work hard for this. I don't know if the next person on is gonna get it, but you gotta work for it. You gotta, yeah, work, for gotta work for this one. You gotta, you gotta work put for in this that one. grind, man. That hustle. <laughs> Listen, man. These guys tried their best to make me cry on camera, <laughs> and I fought through that. <laughs> All right. But, but real talk though, man. We really did this so that we can come together and teach everybody what it really means to grind, hustle, and live like they want to. Right now, we in the grinding stage. We found our hustle. And we're going to live life how we want to. We're at the beginning stages, but this man right here has shown you, you just have to stay the course. Yeah. It's not going to always be easy. It's going to be some things that's going to get in your way. But you got to find a way to keep going. You got to find your reason. I think Matt told me, what is your reason? If you know your reason, then you won't ever have to find anything else to fulfill you to get to where you need to go. So with that being said... First you find your grind. Then you turn it into a hustle. So you live life how you want to. And that is episode four. Thank you again, my brother, for Absolutely. coming. Absolutely. It's been a great episode, Appreciate man. you. We'll see y'all next time. We want to give a special shout out for this episode to CL Photos for providing us with these plaques, these grind hustle with plaques. They uh, blessed us with this. We want to give a special shout out to them down in Virginia. We appreciate y'all. And thank y'all once again. Grind, hustle, live.